Algebra 2 students, this is the video for 7-5 day 1 for May 14th, Friday, May 14th. And it's about exponential and logarithmic equations. We already know that those are inverses of each other. So our objective is to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. But this getting ready is a really good one to think about here. And it says, you are a winner on a TV game show. Which prize would you choose and explain? So prize A, it says, you're going to get $10,000 every week. So you kind of think, well, after one week, I'll have $10,000. After the second week, I'll have $20,000. After the third week, I'll have $30,000. And you realize, yeah, all that's happening here is I'm all that's happening. I mean, we all would love to have this. All that's happening is you're getting $10,000 every week. Prize B doesn't seem like such a big deal. You get a penny today. Then you get two cents the next day. And four cents the next day, and it doubles each and every day. Hmm. Until we see what's really going on. And we haven't studied something called series yet. But what I want to do is show you what's going to happen as we take that penny every day and we double it. So now, there's the penny doubled. There's day two. Day three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Look at that. After the twenty-first day, we have over ten thousand dollars. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th. And we see that powers definitely, using those exponents there, which is doubling by two each time, I started with a penny, and then I started raising two to powers because I had multiplying by two once was times two to the first, Twice was 2 squared, 2 to the third, etc. So for prize B, because that doubling piece actually has to do with exponents, yeah, you're going to want prize B. There won't be enough money to pay you um, pretty soon, and, and that's what you want. So we definitely would go with prize B. And prize B, again, is about exponents. So down here. Any equation that contains the form b to the cx, such as a equals b to the cx, where the exponent includes a variable, that's called an exponential equation. So what was happening in prize b was an exponential equation. Because multiplying by 2 again and again and again is actually increasing the powers. So essential understanding is you can use logarithms to solve exponential equations, and you can use exponents to solve logarithmic equations. So our objective was pretty wide open there, to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. And we don't know which one we're coming to till we turn the page. Solving an exponential equation, common base. And you realize, well, we already saw how to do this earlier in the chapter. 16 to the 3x equals 8. Well, 16 and 8 are not the same, but I try to think, isn't there a smaller number that I can raise to a power and get both 16 and 8? And, of course, we used 8 a lot when we went through Chapter 6, and 8 is 2 to the 3rd, and you realize, well, if I just multiply that by 2 one more time, 8 times 2 is 16, so 16 is 2 to the 4th. But don't forget to raise it to the 3x power. And then... When we raise a power to a power, we have to multiply the exponents. And just like we did in class a few days ago, we said, well, we don't need the big twos anymore. We don't need the bases of two. They're already equal. What we need to happen here is that 12x equals 3. And then we'll divide both sides by 12, and x will equal 1 fourth. And there it is. So we did this earlier in the chapter, did that on purpose. We want to make the connection to how that's going to help us solve these exponential equations. So with got it number one, we have 27 to the 3x equals 81. 
and hopefully both 27 and 81 got your attention because we used those a lot earlier in the year. 27 is 3 to the 3rd, and 81 is 3 to the 4th. And again, we know with a power to a power you multiply, so that will give us 3 to the 9x, and the bases of 3 are already equal. That's not the math we need to do. We need to figure out when does 9x equal 4. And we divide both sides by 9. There's no reducing we can do there. It's x equals 4 ninths. Now, both of these are checkable, both of them. We have just this itty-bitty little equation that we can check. So back up here to this multiple choice problem that we had, we could take 16 to the 3 times 1 fourth power. Well, there it is. There's 8. That's what we were supposed to get on the other side. And down here, we had 27 to the 3 times 4 ninths. So as long as you're careful and you're using those parentheses, there it is. We get 81. So those are definite. Hey, check it and make sure you have it right before you move on. Now, as you're doing those, you should start thinking, wait a second. These were a little too nice. You know, the bases matched up really nice on these problems. What do we do if the bases aren't the same? Well, when the bases aren't the same, we can solve an exponential equation by taking a logarithm of each side of the equation. If m and n are positive and m equals n, then you can take the logarithm of both sides, and the logarithm of m will equal the logarithm of n. So this is going to be using the change of base formula. And this is solving an exponential equation with different bases. So 15 to the 3x equals 285. So the first thing I do is I try to think, can I use some base on my power chart to get 15 and 285? And those are not numbers that are going to show up on our power chart that has all of those nice integer exponents to the first, the second, third, and fourth. So then I think, wait a minute, we can do this. I have to get rid of that 15 because I have to have access to the 3x. I can't even get to it with that 15 in the way. So I'm going to have to take the logarithm base 15 of both sides because these are inverses. And that will give me 3x equals the logarithm base 15 of 285. And thanks to the change of base formula that we had yesterday, I know now that I can punch that into my calculator as logarithm of the big number I'm trying to evaluate over the logarithm of the little subscript, our little number, which is 15. And then, so that I can punch this in all at one time, I know I'm going to have to divide everything by 3 to get my final answer. Because if we punch it all in at one time, we're not going to risk ourselves getting uh, a rounding error as we go through this. So we need LOG of 285 parentheses divided by LOG of 15 parentheses. And I'll just punch enter in before I divide that by 3. Wouldn't have to. I could use parentheses for my big fraction with the logarithms in it and then divide by 3. And there it is. And typically with logarithms, we round to four decimal places. Sometimes this book just goes with three. But logarithms historically have been rounded to four decimal places. So we'd look right here and say, oop, there's a 6 to the right. That's 5 or bigger, so I have to round up. So 0 0.6958. Now, because we had to round, if we check this one, it's not going to come out perfect unless we leave in the answer that we just had in there. Because I want to raise 15 to the 3 times 0 0.6598 power. So 15 to the 3 times second negative pulls up the answer that we just had in there. So it's perfect with all those decimals. And there it is. We get the 285. So again, these are checkable if you do it carefully. Now, got it 2a says, what is the solution of 5 to the 2x equals 130?
So while I'm writing it down, I'm just thinking to myself, hmm, on the power chart, can you raise 5 to some power and get 130? Nope, you won't find any uh, 5 to the something being 130 in that row of 5s. All right, so that means I'm going to take logarithm base 5 of both sides because our inverses are going to cancel right out. I will gain access to the x. And now I'll go ahead and write down the change of base formula for the right-hand side. Logarithm of 130 divided by logarithm of 5. It's the logarithm of the large number we're trying to evaluate, which I mean large by size. And then divided by logarithm of the small number, which is the base. And again, this one will have to be divided by 2 to finish it all up. So this time I'll punch this in with the parentheses for logarithm 130 divided by logarithm of 5 and then divide the whole thing by 2. So you can see, yeah, it can be done all at once if you would want to. So log parentheses log 130 parentheses divided by log of 5 parentheses parentheses. So that tells the calculator, hey, here's my fraction that's made up of all of these logarithms and then divided by 2. And there it is. So to four decimal places, we'll have 1.5122. And again, it's checkable. I'm not going to go ahead and put this one in since I showed you how to do that with the last one. But you certainly could do 5 to the two times the answer, and it'll give you 130. Now, B says, why couldn't we use the exact same method in, in problem one for problem two? Well, because the bases don't match with these. I mean, that's the first thing we check for. But 15 raised to some power is not 285, and 5 raised to some power is not 130. So the bases didn't match. So we needed a new way. And that new way is to take the logarithm of both sides of the equation. And it's a good thing we learned the change of base formula because that works out pretty slick. All right, so problem three says, how about the solution to this one? 4 to the 3x equals 6,000. Now, this one has a little bit more thinking you can do because you can think, all right, well, 4 to the something is 6,000. That's not showing up on my power chart. But how about if I wrote it as 2 squared? You know, maybe, maybe I could get that to work. Well, if you can find 2 to the something is 6,000, then you could do it that way. But most of us would probably give up a little sooner than that because 6,000 is a large number. And we'd just say, I'm going to go ahead and take the logarithm base 4 of both sides, logarithm and base of 4 for a power will cancel each other out. 3x equals logarithm of 6,000 divided by logarithm of 4 for the change of base formula. And then we'll need to divide that entire thing by 3. I'm going to start this again because I accidentally punched in 3,000 instead of 6,000 here. So parentheses log 6,000 parentheses divided by log of 4 parentheses, parentheses, and then we need to divide the whole thing by 3. There we go. And to four decimal places, we definitely have to round up with the fifth decimal place being a 9, so 2.0918. Again, checkable. You know, put it in, use the second negative button to pull the answer back up, and you can check it. All right. The got it. 7 to the 4x equals 800. Now, 800 is a big number. You know, you can try 7 to the something on the power chart and just hope you hit 800. But again, when we see this, most of us are probably going to say, well, 800 is really large. Maybe it doesn't show up on the power chart. Maybe it does, but faster would just be logarithm base 7 of both sides. And I say that because these kind of problems will show up on the ACTs. And if they show up on the ACTs, 
you want to know how do I get this from my calculator because you want to go quickly because it's a time test. Now let's go ahead and use the change of base formula and write log of 800 divided by log of 7. And then we need to divide the whole thing by 4. So let's see what we get here. Parentheses, log of 800 parentheses, divided by, log of 7, parentheses, parentheses, there's the big fraction of logarithms, and divided by 4, so to four decimal places, 0 0.8588. Stop the video and check it if you would like. And then in example B down here, we see a base of 5.2. Well, we don't even have 5.2 on our power charts. So this would definitely be one where we say, you know what, if the calculator will do it, I'd like it to take logarithm base 5.2 of both sides. These two would cancel out. And we'll see if we can punch in log of 400 divide of log, divided by log of 5.2, and then divide the whole thing by 3. Now, I hate to give away the punchline, but your calculator can absolutely do that. So, we'll punch it in, log of 400 parentheses, oops, well, I'll do this in the two steps like I did the first time. So, log of 400 divided by log of 5.2, so have that as a decimal, and then divide it by 3. Again, you can punch it in all at once or do the two steps that you see here. So let's see, four decimal places, that leaves us with an 8 to the right of it. That's a 5 or bigger, so we have to round up 1.2114. You'll see one like this occasionally in the homework. And again, what the book is trying to get you to do is think, what's one thing I could do to this so that I'll be able to solve this? And you'll notice, wait a second, that base of 3 has something in front of it. And all you have to do is figure out how to get rid of it. So if we're adding 4, very easily, we can subtract 4 from both sides. And now you notice, ah, my base is exposed. Now I can figure out how to take the logarithm of both sides. Unless, of course, 3 to the something is 71, shows up on your power chart, which it does not. So we're going to have to take the logarithm base 3 of both sides. That means our logarithm base and, base and the base for our exponent are the same. 2x minus 1 equals, change of base formula, log of 71 divided by the log of 3. And then this one will have a little bit more we have to do for after steps, you know, after we have our nice logarithm fraction in there. So we're going to have to add 1 to both sides. And then we have to divide all of that by 2. All right, so let me move this down so I can see all of this when I'm punching this in. Parentheses, log of 71, parentheses, divided by log of 3, parentheses, parentheses. And then we need plus 1, enter. And let's divide that all by 2. So, get my little red arrow out of there, to four decimal places, 2.400. Again, this gives us that skill of there's one thing I need to do to this problem to make it look like problems I already know how to do. And all we had to do was figure out how to get that base of 3 exposed, isolated. And then we could just take the logarithm base 3 of both sides. So those were all our exponential equations. And we'll start with example 4 when we come back on Monday. Um, we'll see one more exponential, and then we have to talk about the other part of our objective, which was solving those logarithmic equations. But this is a good place to stop.
and do a little homework. And we're not going to do any of the solving by graphing. Don't use graphing at all on this one. We want to use our new skills and our new change of base formula for 7 through 30. So don't uh, do any graphing with those. And then 89 to 91 and 98 to 100 with a little bit of review in there. So again, this is the lesson for Friday, May 14th, Section 7.5, Day 1.